87,000 people speak Yiddish in Brooklyn. That's incredible. That's the size of Trenton, New Jersey. In order to understand the magnitude of this, I go to visit the Satmar sect in Williamsburg. This Hasidic community was established in 1947 by Rabbi Joel Teitelbaum and other survivors of the Holocaust. Teitelbaum encouraged his followers to speak only Yiddish and strictly follow the teachings of the Torah. To learn more about this community, I invite Frida Wiesel, who grew up among the Satmars of Curious Joel in Monroe, New York, to help me explore the Hasidic culture of today. Thanks so much for doing this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Calf's Bakery is one of the most popular kosher bakeries on Lee Avenue in Williamsburg. They have been selling certified kosher dairy products to the community since 1989. Oh, we got some puff pastry rugelach. We grew up calling them kippelach. This is where standard Yiddish that we all know about is different than Hasidic Yiddish here. People know the word rugelach, but the word kippelach it originates apparently from a Hungarian pastry, mm -hmm. and it reflects the different regional areas that Yiddish was brought from, whereas mm -hmm. standard Yiddish comes mostly from Eastern Europe, a lot of Central Europe, Hungarian Jews settled here and brought a different Yiddish. So where in Brooklyn should I call one of these amazing looking things a kippelach? We're gonna, we're gonna make kippelach <laughs> part of, of, of the, the language. Okay. Call them everywhere. Okay. So, so how would Yiddish be used? Like if I'm buying this kippelach, uh, would a lot of the, are a lot of the business transactions here and the social transactions in Yiddish or is it just in the home? We could do it in both Yiddish and English. Most yeah. people would um, do their business transactions primarily in Yiddish, mm -hmm. especially if whoever's at the counter Okay. is um, a man. That would be my impulse. But there's always, always a lot of English mixed into the Yiddish because okay. of the influence of the environment it is in. Grassi Danka, how am I doing? That's an effort. No, how do I say it? Shkoya. Shkoya, Shkoya. Uh -huh. Why don't you taste one? Okay. It's really good. It's good, right? It's good for your hips, it's good for everything. <laughs> Frida left the Satmar sect in her mid-twenties. Even though our presence is tolerated, it is not encouraged. Yiddish originated from Old German, but with time, it incorporated uh, Hebrew and a lot of Eastern languages where the Jewish Jews lived at the time, and it became its own unique Yiddish, which is actually, what's a Yid? It's a Jew. Yiddish is yeah. Jewish. It's the unique Jewish language. So if I blindfolded you, and put you uh, here in Williamsburg versus in, uh, say, Crown Heights, and you just could hear people speak, and that's it. Would you know where you were? I would definitely know in Crown Heights. Even in Borough Park, which is also Hasidic, people have a different enunciation of certain letters. For instance, the L um, would be more American, and I would be able to regionally distinguish between um, people of more piety and insularity than mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. I don't know to which degree Yiddish is spoken in Crown Heights, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely spoken as a first language here and in many homes in Borough Park. Now, what is the role that Yiddish plays in the spiritual or religious community? That's a great question. Yiddish plays a very, very important role in the spiritual, religious community in preservation of the faith, which mm -hmm. is so important in this community. When I was a child, I was always taught that the three reasons why Jews were saved from, from Egypt in the ex exodus was because they didn't change their Shaim, Lucian, and Malbush. Shaim is the name, Lucian is the language, and Malbush is the clothes. It was such a central part of our uh, religious philosophy that preserving the uh, clothing was a way of preserving the faith. What's interesting is Yiddish is called Mamelushin, mm -hmm. which means mother's tongue, yeah. and Hebrew is called uh, Lushin HaKodesh, the holy tongue. And the important thing is that Lushin HaKodesh is very different from Ivrit. Ivrit is modern Hebrew. And you can see from the word itself that it's a modern language, it's a modern interpretation of Hebrew. It's related to the Zionist movement, which the Satmar community does not support. You see modern Hebrew, you, your best guess is it's, there's no relationship to the Satmar community. Exactly. All of these 
toys that we're going to see inside are examples of how this community is creating its own material. That image there with the sort of classic princess <laughs> right, -like exactly. We all know that game, but yeah. here it's not a, a princess, it's a kala, which is yeah. a bride. Uh -huh. And it shows how language expresses culture or faith, because this expresses the hope for every girl to grow up to be a bride and get married, which is so important. This is a game about dressing up to help people who are maybe have a busted tire or locked out of their houses. The language is so much more than just the language, it's a vehicle for faith. See, see these books, they're constantly produced. So it seems like Yiddish internationally is shrinking as a language, but in this area, it's really rapidly growing. Exactly, because as the community is growing, the language is. All of these books have so much about character development and moral lessons. So what are the sort of core values? The importance of not being angry and not mm. being um, jealous, not being spiteful. One of the values in the community is that anything, any personality flaw can be changed. You just have to work on it. And that's when you really serve God. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I was asking about the language differences, but what would you say are sort of deep cultural differences between this community and, again, Crown Heights? The Chabad community and the, Has and the Hasidic community of Williamsburg are extremely different because they have a fundamental ideological difference. The Hasidim from Williamsburg view the outside world as and a force that should be kept out by all, all means, which is why Yiddish is so much more important to Hasidim here, mm -hmm. whereas yeah. the Chabad community views the outside world as a force that should be changed, mm -hmm. brought in. They have proselytizing as a huge part of their culture. One runs from the outside world and the other runs into it to try to change it.